Hi guys, welcome to our channel Ashok IT and this is Ash today is our day 2 in Linux with the shell scripting video series. As part of today's session, we are going to understand what is Linux architecture, what is a shell, what is a kernel, what is Linux file system hierarchy, how the files will be stored in the Linux machine and we will also practice some basic Linux command. Alright, let's get started. Coming to the Linux architecture, Linux will maintain layered architecture. As you see in the diagram, you can run applications in the Linux machine, then shell will be available, kernel will be available, hardware will be available. Hardware means devices, drivers, printers, some terminals will be available. When you run any application or when you run any command in the Linux machine, then shell is responsible to process that command. The shell is like a container, it will verify our command is valid or not. If our command is valid, then shell will convert our command into kernel understandable form. Kernel is heart of the Linux operating system, which will convey the information to the hardware to perform the actual operation. So here, shell is going to act as a mediator between user and kernel, and the kernel will act as a mediator between shell and hardware. So what is the shell? Shell is like a container and it is an interface between users and kernel. So when you perform any operation, then shell will convert that operation into kernel understandable format. Then kernel will give the information to the hardware to perform the actual system operation. Right. The default shell that we are going to use is bash shell in the Linux machine and the shell is most commonly used to run the command. So when you want to perform any operation in the Linux machine, we will execute a command. Linux is CLI based operating system. So if you want to check your present working directory, we are executing a command. Who processed this command? How we got the output? Shell will process our command. Shell will give this command to kernel understandable format. Then kernel will communicate with the hardware in order to perform that operation. Right. So here in the Linux machine, the default shell is bash shell. We can check what is the default shell in the Linux machine by using this command. So I have already connected to my Linux machine. Let me execute this command echo $g1. Bash shell, it is displaying. There is another way to check this echo $shell. A system variable I am using to print the shell information. Slash bin slash bash is printing. That means in this Linux machine, default shell is bash shell. This is used to process our commands and convert our command into kernel understandable form. What is this kernel? Kernel is heart of the Linux operating system and this kernel is one of the main component in the Linux machine. So without kernel, we cannot use the Linux machines. The kernel is the core component and it will act as a mediator between the processes that we are running and the hardware. What kernel does in the Linux machine? Kernel is responsible for memory management. It is responsible for process management in the Linux machine. It is responsible to manage device drivers in the Linux and it will make system calls and it will take care of the security in the Linux machine. So please remember shell and kernel two important com components in the Linux. Shell is a mediator between user and kernel. Kernel is the mediator between the shell and hardware. Kernel is the main component which will communicate with the hardware components in the Linux machine. Next one, coming to the Linux file system hierarchy. In the Linux operating system, everything will be represented as a file only. When we go for Windows, C drive, D drive, E drive, like that we will, we will do the partition in the Windows machine. Whereas in the Linux, everything will start from root direct. Inside the root, some subdirectories will be available. Observe this diagram carefully. This represents Linux file system hierarchy. Now, if you go to the Linux machine, currently I connected to this Linux machine as a EC2 user. Let me go to root directory. cd space slash. Change the directory to the slash. Slash means root directory. Now, I change it to root directory. Then, execute a command called ls-l command. So, it is printing the Linux file system hierarchy. So, this is the Linux file system hierarchy which is starting from the root directory. Okay, so inside this root directory, all these subdirectories will be available. Let us understand what is the purpose of this each subdirectory in the Linux machine. The first one is bin directory. 
what is this bin directory in the Linux machine? You can see bin is available inside the root directory. Okay, this root directory contains all the files which are belongs to root user. Root user called super user in the Linux machine. Then inside the root directory bin available. Bin directory contains essential ready to run programs. Our binaries will be available in the bin directory. So what are the user commands we are executing? Those commands will be available in bin directory. Okay. In the Windows, we will call it as a folder. In the Linux, we will call it as a directory. Directory means folder. The next one, slash boot directory is available. Boot directory contains some files which are helpful to run our Linux machine. To bootstrap our Linux machine. Whenever you start the Linux machine, some bootstrapping process will happen. To do that bootstrapping, some files will be available inside the boot directory. You get my point. The kernel is also part of this boot directory. And slash dev directory. Dev directory nothing but device files will be available. The system hardware input output operations will be available in, in this device directory. The next one slash etc directory is available. The etc directory contains system configuration file. And the slash home directory is available which is very important for us. Linux is multi-user based operating system. Multiple user accounts we can create in the Linux machine. For every user, one user home directory will be created inside the slash home. Now if you see, currently I connected to this machine as a EC2 user. Let me go to EC2 user home directory. If you see my present working directory, I am inside slash home slash EC2 user. So if you create another user account in the Linux machine, for that user, one home directory will be created inside the home. Slash home directory contains the user home directory. Linux is multi-user based operating system. Multiple user accounts we can create. For every user, one home directory will be available to perform our operation. Then slash lib directory is available, which contains shared library. Then next one, slash media. Removable media files will be available in the media directory. Then next one, mount directory, mounted file system. So if you want to mount, suppose for example in the AWS, EFS, Elastic File System is available. I want to mount it to a particular directory in the Linux machine. Then we can use that mount. Mounted file systems will be available in this slash mount directory. Then slash opt. Optional application software packages. If you want to install any particular software, if you want to keep any software, then you can use this opt directory. Then temp directory will be available, which will contain temporary files. We can delete those temporary files. Slash USR, slash user, user utilities and user applications. We can keep in this slash user directory. So this is the Linux file system hierarchy. And remember, everything is starting from root directory in the Linux. And for your user account, one user home directory will be available now. We connected with our Linux machine. Let us execute some basic Linux commands here. If you want to know about any particular Linux command guys, some documentation commands also available in the Linux. For the documentation purpose, you can use man command. For example, I want to know about pwd command, man pwd. Man command will give you the information about the pwd command. So you can see pwd command print a name of current working directory. What is the purpose of the command? What is the description of the command? You can get this kind of documentation by using man command. Man command will give you very short description. If you want to exit from this man page, press Q, press Q to quit. I came out from this man page. If you want to get more information about this command, you can use info command. Info space pwd. Info page. Information page will be available for this pwd command. It will give you more information when compared with the man command. Similarly, if you want to come out from this info page, control C. Then next, help command is available, help space pwd. If you want to know what is the help of this command, what is the main purpose of this command, you can get it by using help command. Man command, info command, help command. These are called as documentational commands in the Linux machine. And let me execute few other commands here. So if you want to see currently with which username you logged in, you can use who am I. Who am I command will display currently logged in username. Okay, the next one, if you want to see what is your present working directory, then you can execute pwd command. Currently, I am pointing to slash home slash ec2 user directory. 
If you want to see the current date, then you can execute the date command. It will print the system date. If you execute cal command, it will print the calendar. So current month calendar it is printed. For example, I want to print the calendar of the year 2030. Cal space 2030. 2030 year calendar it is printed. For example, I want to print the calendar of month May 2030 year. Cal 05 represents May month 2030. 2030 May month calendar it is printed. If you use only Cal current month calendar it is printed. If you use Cal month space year that year calendar it is going to print. Good. Next one you can use a command called uname command. Uname command will display the information system information. Okay. And if you execute a command called uname iPhone R. If you use uname iPhone R command, it will display the kernel version. Kernel release version it is going to print. And if you execute uname iPhone I command, it will display the hardware information. Hardware platform. We are using Linux machine. This is the hardware version of that Linux machine. And if you execute arc command, architecture. What is the architecture of this Linux machine? It is printing. Similarly, if you execute uptime command, it will print from when this machine is up and running. And if you execute free command, it will print the memory level details. How much memory is available? How much memory we have used? How much memory is free? This information we can get by using this free command. And if you execute this clear command, it is going to clear that terminal. So these are the very basic commands that we can practice in the Linux version. What are the commands we have executed? We have executed man command, info command, help command. These are called documentational commands. Next one, who am I will display logged in username, pwd will display present working directory and the date command, current date it will print, cal command, current month calendar it will print, cal 2015, 2015 year calendar it will print, cal 05, 2015. It will print May month calendar of 2050 year. And we have executed, we have executed a command called uname command. It will print system information. Uname iPhone R command, it will print kernel version. If you use uname iPhone I command, it will print the hardware platform information. If you execute arc command, system architecture details, it is going to print. If you execute uptime command, it will print from when this machine is up and running. And if you execute free command, it will print memory level details. How much memory available, how much memory used, that information we can get. And if you execute clear command, then it will clear the terminal. And here, another beauty command, if you execute history, it will print what all the commands that you have executed. So what commands that you have executed in the Linux machine, the list of commands you have executed, complete information it is going to print. This is history command. Next session, we are going to discuss advanced Linux commands. Thanks for watching this video. Please like this video and please comment your opinion on this video.